Hi everyone, so as you know by the title of the video today we are going to talk about foundation rats. So I asked on Instagram if you had any particular questions um, that you wanted me to answer in this video. Got a notepad to the side, hopefully I'll do these in the right order. So I guess the first point to start with is what are foundations? So if you're going to be breeding you need to source foundation rats and those are the rats that are starting your line. So there's a few kind of different ways you can do it. So talking from my own personal experience, the way I did it um, is I got two does from one breeder called Stilly Rats and two bucks from a breeder called Endeavour. This is because the variety that I chose, nobody close enough in my surrounding area actually bred these that I wanted. So me having to go further afield meant it was easier for me to get two bucks, two does. And then I could obviously make them together to get what I wanted. However, if you were close enough to a breeder that um, you, know, you could travel or whatever, you would actually be able to start with just two or three does because if that breeder was close enough, then you could take the does to them and they could mate with the males that they have. So how many you need to start is a bit dependent on what you want to do, you know, how how far you can travel, you know, logistics of it. So it's what's gonna be, what works for you. So in the, in the case of me, I needed the two bucks and the two does because the breeders that I approached for foundations were down south, so it was like a six, seven hour drive, you know, one way. So that worked for me. However, like I said, if you are close enough to the breeder that has what you want to breed as well, you can certainly just take those and then use theirs or someone else's bucks that are close enough to you for travelling. So, what is my next question? I should have put these in an order. I did not put these in an order. Okay, so I kind of covered the question how many is best. So that kind of came into what I just talked about there. You might need two of each sex, you might just be able to take the does, might, you know, you maybe want to go for a trio of does if you want to keep your options open and potentially not breed all, you know, the two does that you get. So that comes kind of hand in hand there. The next question is, how do you know that the foundations you're being offered are a good start for your line? So this comes into doing your research into breeders. Um, I always say to people that want to breed, be involved in the fancy. So if you've been involved in the fancy anyway, you'll get to know people face to face or you'll get to hear certain rattery names come up and you'll know through word of mouth which are good. You do have to do your own research as well, but certainly because I was involved with the fancy, I knew the breeders that I were approaching were good, were reputable and were very much involved in the fancy as well and had a good rep for themselves. So I knew the ones I was approaching were good. So you can de definitely, you know, take word of mouth as well as your own research and don't just take one person's, um, like one person's side of it, so to speak, because, you know, obviously like anything in life, they might have a differing opinion compared to me or, you know, so-and-so over there doesn't have the same opinion. So do your own research, see who's involved with the fancy and approach them and talk to them and just be very open about what you want because that's what I did. I'd never spoken to either of these breeders before, but I had been involved in the fancy. I was going to shows. I knew all of the Scottish breeders that were already up here. So I just out of the blue kind of approached these breeders who were in England and asked for rats seeing that I was looking to breed. I basically just sent an email talking a bit about myself, what I wanted to do and things like that. So basically just be very open about what you want. And certainly meeting face to face can help if it's possible. It was actually after I got the boys that I finally got to meet um, the woman who work, uh, runs Endeavour. I've never face to face met the woman that does Stilly Rats unfortunately, but that's just a logistic point of view that we've never actually been close enough to do it. So it is possible to do without physically meeting face to face, we've obviously got the power of the internet. So certainly be open and honest. If I have had people come to me and be very open about wanting to learn to breed and that can certainly be another video about what I would look for before giving, you know, my rats away to someone to breed. So the other question is, like, how do you, um, oh, have I, I've done that one, read the right question. Is it okay to breed from rats that you think are pretty? 
short answer no um there's more to it like i've had lots of rescues over the years and i've had you know the rescues the lovely little pets and you, you know you might think i really just want you know she's really pretty he's really pretty put them together we'll get you know cute babies but there's such a bigger scale to that um obviously if you've followed my other videos you've known that i've had things go wrong i've had do die i've had entire litters die you know like there's complications it's more than just putting two rats together so you just looking at one and saying it's pretty it's potentially come from you know a pet shop background a backyard breeder it does not have any health that you know of that you, you literally are just looking at what you've got in front of you and it could look healthy but you don't know you know the rest of the story like what's what's the rest of the family tree like that's why we need to go to a reptile breeder to start from because they have you know years of history on their rats like i have a large spreadsheet and although i'm quite new and i'm only about two and a half years in i already have quite a compulsive spreadsheet on what health issues have come up in my rats and it's really important that you note that because you want to be able to improve that and move on from it and make a better healthier rat so just breeding from one that you think is pretty is 100 percent not a good idea like really do not recommend it you really just need to get the um, good foundations and know what you're working with because if you're working with unknown lines you could you know you're bringing more unhealthy lines into the world and you're bringing more unknowns into the world you know at least using reptile breeders lines that are already established you know what you're working with you will of course get the odd thing that will pop up that is inevitable that is life but you're able to make the choices to move away from that and the choices to improve it there's you know times where things will come up in litters and um, i've not personally had this issue yet but i know some of my friends do where you find something that comes up that makes you stop that line completely because you've had health issues for a couple of generations and you've been unable to fix it and so that's the point where you say enough's enough the rats are you know long term the rats are suffering if we carry on trying to fix this line or we carry on making this line so the bigger better thing to do is to stop the line at that point and obviously if you're being from something that's unknown you have absolutely no idea like you know what is hiding in there i mean even now i'm still getting recessive genes popping up like nothing bad you know but colors i wasn't expecting and um, markings i weren't i wasn't expecting and that is all you know that's where the recessive genes come in and the recessive genes are the ones that are hidden the ones that you don't see when you look at your rats and you don't know they're there until you get rats that happen to have the two recessives and suddenly you know you you see that so that's something to think about as well than just putting together pretty rats um i think i've probably covered like most of it i mean that's the kind of questions i got asked and that's i think that's a good gist of it um so as i said if you do want to breed join the clubs like join the rat club so in terms of you know being in the uk you've got the national fancy rat society you've got the north of england rat society they're the two that i'm a member of and um, you've also got the yorkshire rat club the midlands rat club um and there's also like the southern um oh, hello <laughs> you've also got the southern um i think it's the rat and mouse fancy like a london kind of club as well i don't remember the exact name of that but join your clubs you know become part of it get involved like even if you don't want to personally show going to shows and meeting people is so important because you get that networking like I genuinely think that I wouldn't have got breeding rats so easily having approached breeders that had no idea who I was if I wasn't as involved up here in the clubs and the shows as I was because there was other people that could vouch for me and vouch that I was you know a good person to give rats to, to basically like I'd be really good as a breeder and that they should you know support me and help me so I was very thankful that I was able to get off, you know, very, really, really quickly. I did get hold of my foundation rats within, I think it was a few months, you know, but that was a bit of potluck of the people I, I was approaching having enough to give me. And that's something to note that um, breeders or people that want to breed, other breeders who are already breeding, um, we get priority over pet homes. Um, and I'm the exact same. Like I do have a waiting list and people are obviously waiting for my rats. 
However, if another breeder needed something, or a new breeder came along and I was supporting the new breeder, then they would literally go to the top of the list. They would get before anyone else because that is working to help the fancy and improve it as a whole, and I want to support that. Now that doesn't mean that when you go on people's waiting list you, you lie and you say that you want to be just for the sake of jumping up the list because that's, you know, that's a lie <laughs> or starters and it's not right. But it's just to make you aware that as breeders we wholly support other breeders and we will help them where we can. And if that means, you know, giving them rats before someone else to help them out and start their lines or, you know, aid their lines, then we will do that. And it's very important that we all work together and again, that goes back to the networking side of it. All working together and all just supporting each other. So I hope that was a bit helpful to everyone. Um, because I quite often use the word foundation rats when we talk about things and maybe people don't quite understand you know exactly what a foundation rat is. So I hope you found this video helpful. If there's any more questions, if you leave them down below, I'll um, do my best to answer them. But thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.